Hello students, I'm back to show you how to use Visual Studio for Windows applications in part 2. Part 1 we had shown how to build command line applications in two different ways using module and then using a class. So in this module basically I'm going to be just going to do this part and in the second part of the previous video where I did the command line application from using a class I myself forgot to put these two so I can I can see how you'll have to get used to it as I'm getting used to it so option strict on option explicit on should be there in every source code file so uh, I'm gonna upload the code for command line application using module and command line application using shared class and this will definitely be on there I forgot in the video for this one uh, in the part one of this video okay so on to Visual Studio to show you how to build a Windows application or graphical user interface application in vb.net we won't be building anything very fancy but we are going to be building a very basic uh, Windows application which does of course bare minimum but it illustrates the principle so on to Visual Studio so this is my blank uh, just startup Visual Studio uh, oh by the way I wanted to point out one more thing when you watch these videos you should maximize the the window so that you can see all the fine print if you leave it exactly the the way the pic, uh, picture size appears in D12 or any other medium even on YouTube you may not see all the typing inside the coding environment so maximize it uh, that'll improve your visibility of all the code that I'm typing okay so to build Windows application first few points are same we click file new project we pick Visual Basic, it could be either under other languages or under here, the very first item. That depends upon the setting that you made when you install Visual Studio. But this time we don't choose console application, we choose Windows Form application. Okay? And then I call it uh, Windows App. button because I'm gonna be using a button actually so and then I click OK and you'll see something very interesting in Windows Forms application that is quite different from command line application okay we need to wait because it is slower okay all of a sudden this form appears and this form is the one that is your Windows form on which you can build your graphical user interface it has a generic name form one when I click here and then I click on this okay fine background operation okay haven't seen that before okay when I click on properties each component that you see here is going to have a property sheet and by clicking on this push button I can fix this property sheet in, in its place and notice here's the name form one it's uh, it's not a very good name to show up here because when you see these forms on the internet or anywhere else there's some interesting name other than form one and this could be changed by changing the text property properties are alphabetical I hope I think uh, okay well let's see let's make them alphabetical and here's the text property so if I click here right now it's form one not a not a very good name so let's give it a good name uh, button saying hello slightly better name if I was designing a order form for the pizza store it'll say pizza store application or something so this is our kind of canvas on which we can paint different components. So components could be our button, text boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, list boxes, 
you can embed videos you can do like a whole bunch of things and you can all even have forms uh, where you click on a button another form opens up so there are a lot of those situations that are there okay so at this point I'm gonna add at least one component just to show you the basic principles and for that what I need is I need my toolbox so this is my toolbox and I can click here so my toolbox shows up and actually let's let me go back just a second I will remove that and get the toolbox here and put toolbox in the place this toolbox is something called common controls control is a class a reusable software component in actually .NET not just in VB.NET it's same really same bunch of classes and components for C sharp as well and here's the button here's the checkbox combo box date and time picker label etc etc and when we do Windows application we'll see more of these at that time so I want to create a button which when I press it will do something so I take that here and click that here notice it has a generic name right now button one uh, that's the text property button one it's not very interesting obviously I want to change that but there are a bunch of other things I want to change about this so I go back to see this is clicked chosen and it has these sizing handles you can make it bigger if you like and sometimes you have to do that and once the sizing handles are showing up then I can click on the property sheet and see the properties of this button so of course text property button one is not very interesting I'm gonna change it to uh, say hello something like that if it was a pizza store application it will say buy pizza or compute cost or something like that okay so as soon as I did that change over here you can change the fonts here if you like uh, I would go back to property sheet again uh, by going to the font property so that's right here if I click here uh, it changes to these ellipses in a row and if I want to change the font let's say I want to change font to 10 bold click OK uh, it becomes a little bit bigger you can change the background also if you like we won't go through that right now but basically when you change properties here like I change the fonts here a bunch of code is filled out for you automatically by VB.net behind the scene if I change the size same thing happens bunch of code is being automatically added for you inside your project by the VB.net okay all right that's fine see as it is if I press this button it's not going to do anything and I will show that to you by compiling and running it so what I'm saying right now it's it's a dumb button it doesn't really do anything so we can build the solution just like we did in the command line environment it says once succeeded means it works and then again start without debugging and here's my form on which there's a button called say hello but if I press that nothing happens so it's a, it's a dumb button right now we need to give it some intelligence to to do something uh, you don't want in your software buttons that don't do anything when you press them so I'm gonna close that in order to fill out the code that will be executed when this button is pressed you just need to double click on this and here a window opened up where you can put the code that will be executed when button is pressed okay all right so we want it to let's say we want it to say hello from vb.net but we want it to be shown inside a pop-up box and vb.net has a pop-up box called uh, message box I believe message box 
dot show and whatever you pass as an argument to the show method that will show up in a pop box so I really just want to say uh, hello from vb dot net that's all I want to do and don't forget that I did say that I want to have in every source code file for one dot vb is a source code file that option strict on and option explicit on so I am going to do that and option explicit okay and now we're fine so we added this code and we can now build it again compile building in compiling compiler tries to find all the errors oh and actually I already have an error I didn't close my quotes uh, so that would have been picked up if I didn't do that so let's do that compile it build solution and it says one succeeded no errors and then we do again start without debugging and this time if I click it and the message doesn't show up then something is seriously wrong so the message that I gave here should show up in a pop-up box and it's no longer a dumb button and there it is see hello from vb.net okay and if I click OK it will disappear but if I click it again it will show up and so on so here in this project I've only shown you how to put a button but later on you can put a whole bunch of things in there radio buttons check boxes like for a pizza uh, and so on a reset button that will reset all the conditions and everything so we close that and notice in this environment this was the code view but you can go back into the code view and the form view very easily if I just click here now I got my form back canvas back but if I click here I got my code back actually okay and all the active component that you want to put the code for that should do something when you click on them basically double click on that component and you'll get the code window opening up that will allow you to put the code in that should be executed when that component is activated okay the other thing I want to tell you when you submit your project you will be submitting the entire folder that has the solution and some of you had problem with that in the past I'm going to show you how to locate your project folder uh, if you don't know the path I'm going to show that in the command line one a little bit easier so for example let's say you did this project here and here's my file main class.vb we don't want you to submit just that file we want you to submit your entire project so right click and click on open contain for uh, containing folder or you can even copy the full path but in any case open the containing folder and this is the containing folder and when I go okay projects this is the folder that you should submit and how would you submit that basically you'll zip make a zip copy of that which is really right click send to compress zip folder here's the zip this is the one you would be submitting okay and the path at which is located is right here actually okay so now I've shown you how to build uh, visual studio uh, Visual Basic.net Windows application also I've shown you the minimal but you'll do more in the future okay thank you so much I'll see you in future videos bye